Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another video. The big breaking news coming out of Liverpool today is that Mohamed Salah has finally, I can't do my best way in the Rock Johnson impression, but finally signed a new contract with Liverpool. He has renewed with Liverpool for another three years. The news is all coming out from the top tier Liverpool journalists and then confirmed by Liverpool themselves that Mohamed Salah, the Egyptian king, has signed a new deal. Three years in the making worth around about 350000 a week, according to James Pearce. This saga has finally been put to bed. We can all rest easy now knowing that Mohamed Salah is going to be staying at Liverpool for at least another three years. We're going to be talking all about this uh, breaking news story. We're going to be talking about what it means for Liverpool, for Salah and everything in between. But before we get any further in doing that, please smash a like on the video if you're enjoying the video so far and enjoying the content. And obviously love the fact that Mohamed Salah is staying at Liverpool. And also subscribe if you're new. Both of them are always in front of be greatly appreciated. But for now, let's talk about this big breaking news story because this is absolutely huge. I wasn't expecting much to come out of Liverpool uh, this summer, maybe the odd couple of contracts uh, uh, renewals and maybe a couple of loan deals going out for youngsters here and there and stuff. I wasn't expecting anything really to happen with Salah until the final six months of his contract because it had dragged on for so long. But obviously I'm pleased to say that this is happening. This is genuine. This is obviously legitimate now that Mohamed Salah is staying at Liverpool for another three years as confirmed by Liverpool, James Pearce. And Fabrizio Romano and other journalists that are picking this information up. Uh, obviously, it started... It, it happened all so fast. It started with um, Salah's agent tweeting a laughing emoji tweet. Um, it followed up with Liverpool posting a, a photo or, or a small video of, um, a, 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 of a sort of holiday sort of scene. A holiday scene which looked very much like the kind of scene that Salah's been posting a lot of in recent days. People put two and two together and then it all came about. Then it all happened. Salah uh, being announced to be renewing his contract with Liverpool. This saga that's been dragging on for so, so long has obviously now come to fruition and has now been laid to rest. Everything that has culminated, done and dusted. And look, we knew that this could end up one or two, one of a few ways. Obviously, the, the renewal could happen, which obviously now it has happened. We knew that obviously Salah could run down his contract or Liverpool could look to cash in on Salah this summer. I think with obviously Sadio Mane leaving, Liverpool cashing in on Salah wouldn't have been the right choice. Um, but I, 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 I can't, I, I can't say anything other than I'm happy that we finally reached a conclusion to this mad, uh, this mad story. Um, obviously there was a lot of things that were said in recent months, a lot of things that's been said over the past year about this story, about Salah, about his agent, about the club, how Liverpool didn't really want to back down from their stance, how Salah was wanting what he felt he deserved and let's face it you can't really argue with someone who since his arrival back in 2017 has been ever so consistent uh, been a big part of everything that Liverpool have won during that time won a couple of golden boots to his name as well won many individual awards broke many records and basically has a sort of tagline that's attached to him, which is basically apart from Mo Salah, which is to describe anybody that's done really well in re in recent weeks, in recent months, in recent times, where they've, where they've had some good form. And it's always, except for Mo Salah, so-and-so hasn't scored this amount of goals or this amount of assists or this amount of chances created or whatever it may be. He's always had the except for Mo Salah story since he's obviously arrived at Liverpool. He has somewhat justified a lot of Liverpool pushing the boat out, so to speak, to get him to sign and stay with the club. And obviously today it has all come about that on the 1st of July, it has happened. He is staying in that five-year spell that I was talking about since he arrived in 2017, 
He's made 254 appearances for the club. He scored 156 goals in that time across all competitions and assisted 63 times as well, which is an incredible record to say the least. He is the club's ninth highest scorer of all time. And you would imagine that he's going to obviously bag a few more goals in the time that he's obviously going to stay. He's going to be a big part of Liverpool's season this season, you feel. He's going to be linking up with the with the likes of the new boy, Darwin Nunes, as well as um, maybe Fabio Carvalho, depending on where Carvalho is going to be playing, of course. We don't really know uh, what his role currently is set in stone as of right now. But... He is obviously a huge and respected member of this squad and is a leader in his own right. People look up to him. People recognise him as being the, the guy in the Liverpool team. And for a period of time last season, you could arguably say he was the best player in the world. There was a period uh, at the beginning of the season going into the Christmas time uh, area of the, of the campaign as well, where he was arguably the best player in the world. He certainly was the best player in the Premier League and he was scoring goals for fun, he was assisting for fun, he was creating plenty of chances, scoring some absolute worldy of goals. Like the back-to-back -back ones stick out in my mind, especially the ones against Manchester City and then Watford. Just absolutely incredible. Yes, after AFCON his performances did, well, his goals and assists did stutter a little bit. I wouldn't say his performances were completely gone because I think the performances were there. I just think the goals and assists did stutter and dry up a little bit. But he was still there when you needed him most to score in big and vital games. And, you know, there might have been reasons for that. You can question fatigue. You can question tiredness, especially with him obviously going to the African Cup of Nations and playing pretty much extra time in all of the knockout stage games over there and playing all the group stages and everything like along them lines. Um, and you can also question outside interferences. I think I think he tried to separate himself, obviously, from the talk off the pitch about his contract situation and his agent and everything. And I think that maybe it did play into 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 his game as well, into, into his performances. And I think also teams just sort of doubled up on him, so to speak. And it allowed other players in that Liverpool squad, the likes of Yusadio Mane moving into the centre and obviously new boy Luis Diaz on the left wing, to kind of have a bit more joy than I think they would have had otherwise. I think them doubling up on Salah, teams recognising Salah as, as a genuine danger man, really did kind of help other, te other players flourish in that Liverpool team and help Liverpool to carry on how their season ended, of course. So it kind of helped in other ways and didn't really help Salah in a lot, but it was all about the team and all about how Salah could get even better despite having more obstacles thrown in his way. And obviously that did help him as well. And like I say, he was still there in big moments. He still managed to score plenty of goals against Manchester United, for an example. And and like, like I say... That talk just snowballed and snowballed and snowballed. And it was just question marks over could he separate himself from that. And then you have the club side of things, of course, where people were questioning Liverpool, whether they should um, sell him in the summer to cash in on him while they still have him and to make some money from him, of course, or whether they were going to let him run down his contract, or whether they were going to be confident enough that he would sign a contract anyway. And I... And, I said at the beginning that like, I was confident that he would sign, but the longer it did drag on, the more I was wondering whether or not Liverpool were just going to not break their stance on this or not break their position on, obviously, his wage demands and everything that had been spoken about in that sense. Uh, so I kind of did change my stance a little bit as it drew on. I didn't think they were going to cash in on him, like I said, because they were already going to be uh, cashing in on Sadio Mane this summer. So I didn't think that they were going to lose two of the biggest players and two of the th the natural front three, shall we say, uh, in the same transfer window. So it was either going to be that he was either going to sign later on or he was going to uh, uh, run down his contract and leave on a free next season. And now, of course, we know it's all been laid to rest. He has signed a new three-year deal with Liverpool. I'm happy. I'm sure a lot of Liverpool fans as well are very happy about this news and, and are uh, very, very excited about the prospect of Mohamed Salah staying at Liverpool, breaking more records, scoring more goals, assisting more uh, for his teammates and, of course, 
bringing home more trophies. It's clearly a big move for Liverpool. It's clearly big for the squad. It's big for the manager and the coaching staff as well, and Jurgen Klopp and everybody else. It's big for the club itself in terms of, obviously, monetary game and, obviously, eyes on the products from Africa and Egypt and everything. Uh, it's, it's a big statement for the club in terms of, obviously, going ahead into next season. It's a big big statement in terms of now that obviously that's all been put to rest, Salah can focus now solely on uh, goals again and solely on, on, on helping Liverpool to win trophies and everything along them lines. Um, it's a big statement in terms of Liverpool as well for wage budget. Like this is different for Liverpool, offering the kind of money that's being talked about, especially by, like I say, James Pearce. It's big in terms of that aspect that Liverpool can flex that wage budget a little bit further if if they feel a player is deserving of it and if if they feel a player um, is is worthy of it and that doesn't go and, and whether that will have a knock on effect on the rest of the team so like your likes of Virgil Van Dijk and Trent Alexander Arnold and all them kind of uh, world class players remains to be seen but it also could be interesting to see how Liverpool conduct their future business when it comes to obviously future transfer windows in terms of bringing in these ready established stars and saying we don't normally do this to many players but we will flex our wage budget to suit you and we will um, because we want you to come to our team and we want you to be a massive part of that team and it'll be interesting like I say to see if that has a knock-on effect on the players that Liverpool already have and the players that Liverpool want to bring in. Um, but like I say, this is all about Salah. This is all about Mohamed Salah. Um, and it does put a massive question over Liverpool and Salah to rest ahead of the new season. It does put that question to rest. It basically states Liverpool have done their main business. Their main business is pretty much done. I don't see Liverpool buying anybody in unless circumstances change, unless injuries happen, um, unless um, uh, someone comes in with a massive bid for a player that they need to replace or whatever it may be. I don't see anything massively uh, massively changing that, the, the current state of the squad. I don't, I don't see that happening unless, like I say, big circumstances outside of Liverpool's hands take control. This was only going to be the ma the main story, I think. If anything was going to happen that was going to be massive, it would be the Salah contract signing, which, like I say, has now been put to rest and laid to rest ahead of the new season, which begins very, very soon. The pre-season preparations and everything begin very, very soon. But now that there's no need to worry about it, there's no need to overthink it, there's no need to look ahead to next season when obviously Salah's contract was originally going to expire. There's no need for all of that now. Liverpool and Mohamed Salah in particular can focus on the new season that's coming up, pre-season beginning in a couple of weeks' time, if that. And they can say, right, let's go after Manchester City. Let's, let's we've got all, all outside interferences are laid to rest. Let's focus on the pitch getting results and because obviously it's going to be a massive season and it's not going to be just a massive season it's going to be an interesting and unique one because of obviously the world cup coming up it's just going to be about getting the results on the pitch and like i say that is exactly what Salah and liverpool now can focus on uh, as far as Liverpool's other transfer business, there may be one or two other contracts that may be needing, that, that are being talked about. Obviously, we, we've heard about Naby Keita. Apparently, Liverpool are, gonna, are, are starting talks with him, negotiations with him over signing. And there may be one or two players that may be, uh, um, and that may be in need of a, a new contract renewal or protecting the investment. Other than that, it may just be a couple of youngsters going out on loan. I see Liverpool being closed for transfer business in terms of incomings, but in terms of outgoings, a couple of loans here and there, and the odd contract signing as well. Uh, maybe what Liverpool are going to be, have to be uh, focused on going forward into the summer. But like I say, for now, this is all about Mohamed Salah. He has signed a new Liverpool contract. He has signed a new contract that is worth three years and around 350k, according to James Pears. I, for one, am very excited and happy about this news that we can uh, see Salah in a Liverpool shirt for years to come. And not only that, but also 
uh, we can lay this whole ma mad story, this mad saga to rest for years to come. But of course, these are just the thoughts, comments, opinions, predictions, whatever you want to call it, of this guy. I want to know what you guys think. What do you make of the news that Mohamed Salah has signed a new Liverpool contract going forward? What, do you, what are your own thoughts, your comments, opinions, predictions, whatever you want to call it on this story? I'd love to read them all down below in the comment section because we're sure it'll make for interesting reading. Otherwise, hit that like button on the way out if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you're new or want to see more content like this. Both things are always and forever be greatly appreciated. And as always, thank you all so much for watching and listening. I've been Fletch. This has been another Fletch Talks video. Three more years of Salah. I cannot wait for it. And uh, thank you all for watching and listening. And I will see and speak to you all again soon in another video.